Well, thank you all for being here. Um, it seems like we were here not too long ago for this meeting. <laughs> this year went pretty quickly. Um, and we started this meeting a number of years ago so that all the committees could get together and kind of eyeball one another and tell one another what they've been doing, what they, are, what they want to do, and what their future plans are. And we found that it, uh, it, it helped uh, bring people together, help people understand better what uh, other boards, commissions, and committees were doing. Um, and uh, it, uh, it reduced some duplication and helped uh, with information sharing. So um, we've continued this tradition. I, I guess we're about, this is about nine years or so, eight or nine years we've been doing this. And um, everybody seems to like this meeting. Uh, and and uh, we've gotten some good comments from um, our residents when they, when they view it on, uh, on FCAT. So um, we'll start on this side with David. David, what do you have for us? Well, uh, I'm David Barton, chair of the Personnel Committee, which is one of the smallest committees, if not the smallest committee. There are supposed to be three of us, but in fact, there are two. And so it's Susan Fenton and myself. Uh, you may remember at the town meeting that there was a bylaw change regarding the shape of this committee. And, and it was because the committee was established probably eight, nine years ago, um, and at a time when there was no town administrator. There was just the assistant, you remember, uh, the assistant to the select board. And Susan Fenton was one of the original members. She's continued year on going all right to the present time. She just retired as a lawyer, an expert on labor law. Uh, so having her on board for all those years was significant from the point of view of the fact that she has a, a take on uh, the responsibility of town to late to its employees, but at the same time a strong sense for what the responsibility is of the employees to the town. And this balance was very important, especially in the revision of the handbook, which took quite a while to do. Uh, had not been revised in five years. And with Tom's insistence that it be revised, Susan and I got on board on this. And it was Susan very much who, who looked at this with a very lawyer's eye and said, this is not right, this has to be changed, this should be clearer, this should be. So the handbook comes forward as a darn good book. Uh, the bylaw requires that it be updated annually if we have to, and that's part of the work of the committee is to make certain that everything is updated rather than letting it slide for X number of years. The most recent uh, meeting of ours was October 30th, and you have to imagine the way the form of the meetings are because this, the bylaws set us up in a position where Tom essentially sets our agenda. This is Tom Hutch. And Lisa takes the minutes. I don't think there's another committee who has this kind of arrangement. Uh, we, Susan and I, and the third who's not, not disappeared, um, are the committee that vote. We make recommendations, but Tom and Lisa are not voting members. Uh, the most recent meeting, though, focused on the matter of an HR person. And the HR person is human resources. It's probably familiar to you all in some way. Um, but there was a recent um, study made by the former HR administrator of the town of Amherst, who was retired and is now a consultant. And this person gave her committee report, her report, to Tom, and it became a focus of our own meeting. Uh, and it's essentially looking at the possibility that an HR person would be desired in all four towns, that would be, of course, Deerfield, Sunderland, Conway, and Waitley, and including the Frontier School District, though they've had their own HR person, right? Isn't that so? I guess she's left her... You know. um, what, the, it's the, the HR duties have been given to yeah, the right. business manager to to yeah. deal with um, 
Yeah, they they're, they won't be participating in the yeah that's what I in that's the regional thing just because they feel declining enrollment and increasing uh, uh, increasing administrative costs are not the two directions that they want to be going in at the same time. Yeah, and so this this particular uh, analysis of the four towns plus Frontier's mm -hmm. needs uh, indicated that yes, Frontier might out opt out, in which case the four towns could share one HR person and the cost being based really on population size and so that Conway might have a little less cost than Deerfield, which is larger. The point being that um, this particular person identified 19 human resource functions that an HR person would be responsible for uh, looking at in the case of all towns. And the tasks would be form are performed by any number of people already within the town, like Jan Warner and Tom, and so in fact Tom, uh, not long ago, gave an anti-harassment uh, seminar for 19 town employees. This is what an HR person would ordinarily do. Um, what it indicated in this report was that there are six of these 19 uh, um, ideal things that should be dealt with by the human or the HR person are not being dealt with by any of the towns so that there is a need to do something in addition. And I mention this only because in our discussion, Sue's and mine and Tom's and Lisa on board as our, as our uh, minute taker, we were very much in favor. And we suggested that we send a note to the select board indicating that we would recommend joining at least the other towns in sharing an HR person. So that's our update. We have a meeting on uh, December 4th where we'll no doubt pick up the same subject, if not others. Thank you, David. Yeah. Any questions for David? Yes, hi. 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 Um, are, are the other towns interested? Don't know. Okay. Tom, you would have to just... Yeah, um, this is all very new, okay. so we haven't heard back from... All right. Thanks. Uh, generally, what are these six functions that aren't being done? Well, and how critical are they? Well, apparently, I just go back to the 19. Yeah. I don't know exactly which they are, but I can read what the basic functions are supposed to be. As it is, uh, I do everything that needs to be done. Uh, I'm pretty much doing things as the, as they come up, rather than being proactive about anything or comprehensive in the work that I do. So it's taken uh, years for me to get this anti-harassment training in gear, and that's something that should be done annually. So now that I have overcome that hurdle, maybe it can happen on an annual basis. Well, well, Dave, rather than you're reading it, maybe yeah. we can just yeah. explore this later. Because there are 19, they're all listed here. It's quite a list. Mm -hmm. The select were voted two to one last week to pursue the thing I I got outvoted. <laughs> we voted to let the other three towns know that we're we'd be in, we're interested. See what they're for the Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chief, why don't you take it? Well, we have, uh, at the present time, we have increased uh, our fire force by one fire, full, uh, regular of age firefighter. There's possibly a second one coming on for a total of, without the second one's count, we'll be up to 27 firefighters now in Conway. Uh, we have. On the downside, we have shrunk our junior force from six to four because two of the children, the families, have moved out of town. So, uh, for one reason or the other. So, if you know of anybody that's interested, in juniors, boys or girls, from ages 14 to 18, uh, they can see us and, and talk to us and about joining the junior fire squad. Uh, the fire department has been busy this year. We're training and all kinds of 
different things. Uh, there's actually no new training going on right now as far as something different out of the ordinary. Uh, we have CPR and uh, first responder course coming up after the first of the year, which involves quite a few weeks of training um, to stay qualified according to the state of Massachusetts. Uh, we are just starting to get involved with this uh, Department of Labor Standards. Has some bunch of new requirements that came out in February this year. Uh, as far as uh, how you handle your trainings, a lot of it we haven't got up to snuff on yet, but a lot of it should deal with nothing but paperwork. It's <laughs> seeming like a lot of it's a big paper chase. It's no really different than what we've been doing, except they want it all written and laid out so somebody can come in and look at it. Um, so that's kind of a difficult thing to manage at this point. Um, we have very recently, Asheville came to us, myself and John O'Rourke, their chairman, met with uh, the chairman of the Board of Selectmen in town of Asheville, the Asheville Fire Chief and myself met, uh, the two groups met together to discuss <coughs> possibly looking into a merger with both towns because Asheville is in a very hurting stage as far as the number of firefighters they have. Uh, they're very, 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 very low. And uh, we have the adequate numbers that we could help them. So we're in the process, we've had several meetings. Just uh, myself and the fire chief just met last week and we're trying to put together some sort of, I wouldn't call it a plan, I guess it would call it suggestions that Tom and, mm -hmm. and John can get together with Asheville Board of Selectmen and, and kind of hammer out for us, how going up and assist on them with calls. Uh, just to show you how the importance of that is last week, Asheville had a major structure fire mm -hmm. at seven o'clock one evening. They had three of their firefighters there and we had 13 of ours. So uh, they were very, very grateful that we were there to help them. So uh, uh, that just shows you kind of how much we're hurt there in, up there in Nashville. Um, so we're in the process of working with that, <coughs> through that. We have to work through it financially, basically wise, so that our town and county doesn't get hit in the pocket. Uh, and what, I'm, what we're trying to put together now is we have what we call a standard mutual aid agreement with throughout the tri-state district, which is Vermont, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire, and uh, we're, uh, we can go to assist any town that needs it. They can come assist us, and it, it dissolves everybody of costs and insurance reasons and so forth. So we don't want to destroy that. I don't want personally want to see that destroyed between the two communities in case something changes down the road and they get better, so they don't need this assistance. So we're trying to figure out a way to keep that intact and, uh, and, and then move forward in, in assisting them and being getting compensated for it. Um, other than that, I think the Pioneer Department is in really good shape this year. Uh, we haven't had a lot of calls, which is fine with me. Uh, I don't know what happened to the automobiles in county, but they've been behaving themselves really well this year. Because usually we have a lot of automobile crashes and <laughs> <laughs> and things like that. And of course, you all see the light company around tree trimming. Mm -hmm. That's cut a tremendous amount of calls off the fire department. Oh, yeah. We average 72, 65 to 72, 73 on a 10 year average uh, number of calls uh, 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 per year. We're going to up to only 57 so far this year. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's been very, very good as far as that goes. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you want to look at averages, the 10 year average, we average one structure fire in every two and a half years on the average of a 10 year cycle. We had three structure fires this year in one month. So that kind of blew that average all of all pieces. No, that was not, these are all in Conway. These are Conway calls I'm talking about. This is earlier this year and uh, earlier this summer we had three in one month, major structure fires. It actually was actually more early spring than we in summer. We had all these calls. So you never know. I mean, you take them as, as, as they come out, you're dealt to you, and uh, we try to cover them all in the best way we can, and uh, we have a good force. Like I said, we average on a, most every call, average between, 
between uh, eight and fifteen people show up for every call, which is good. Eight, of course, is the daytime. Uh, you might see down to five or three in the daytime sometimes, depending on where people are and what they're doing. A lot of our firefighters work out of town, like most people in most towns do. But we uh, we still manage to pull in, you know, four to five, six in the daytime calls, which is very good. And one of the newest firefighters who just came on board tonight, thanks to our board of selectmen, worked right across the street at Orchard Equipment, a new young man. So he's going to be an asset for the daytime calls. So um, other than that, uh, our budgets are doing good this year. We're going to see another increase in this next year in our budget. Uh, it's probably going to be, I haven't figured it quite yet, but it's going to be somewhere in the range of an increase of $10,000. It's because last, this past year we phased in training. Every, all our firefighters are getting paid for training. We were never doing that before. And we, according to uh, Tom investigated and found out, you know, we were supposed to be paying the guys for training. Well, so we said, I said, okay. And I talked to the people about it and they said, well, okay, if we have to, we have to, you know. That's really not why they're there, but it is what it is. So I said, why don't, I talked to my people and they said, why don't we, Law of talent to phase it in in a 50 50 grant. 50% 50 of the training this year, which we're under right now, so every one week a year, a month, they'll get paid for training. Next year, we'll pay for both. The, they train twice a month, every second and fourth Wednesday. Um, so next year, they'll be paid for the full training besides the regular cost, which will bump off the budget about $10,000. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, that'll, and that'll bring us up to full training costs. Mm -hmm and everybody be getting paid so for what they do. They are dedicating their time, you know, they go out of their way to come up there on Wednesday nights for two hours, I guess they should be compensated. Like everybody else in the community. We found out that all of the other communities around us had been paying for years and I never realized it. Mm -hmm. So, other than that, I guess, anybody's got any questions, I can answer them. Thanks. A lot of brush fires? None. None, is that right? Is they didn't have some, one this year. change? The way Wet happens. dampness. Not as, not as Although there was a uh, yeah, Sunday, there was a bunch of towns that had brush fires Sunday. Right. It's past Sunday. Mm -hmm. As cool as it was, but they had brush fires. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we dried the leaves out enough. Because of because of Bob's leadership and uh, the work that his uh, officers do, the training that he does, uh, the the junior firefighter program that he has, we have an exemplary fire department for a tent for the town that we have the size of our town they are outstanding uh, and it's not something that you see in a lot of towns around here and as Bob mentioned uh, you have a situation in Ashfield where you would have two firefighters uh, answering a call one of whom was the chief both of whom are 70 or over mm -hmm. and you know unfortunately you need younger blood to, to help with, with any of those fires. That's why we're trying to uh, work something out with Ashfield to help them out, make sure that they can cover uh, any serious uh, situations with their, their fire department. But we have, we have an outstanding fire department. We're very fortunate. Thanks to Bob. Yeah. <clears throat> Walter, what do you have for us? Um, I've got two things. Um, uh, Walter Goodrich, by the way. Um, I'm tree warden. Uh, there's not a lot to report. Um, most of the work uh, of the tree warden involves uh, talking to and visiting people who um, would like uh, trees removed, um, feeling that they are on town property. And my job is to explain that the town roads are right of ways and the town does not own trees on either side. They have the, uh, <clears throat> the right, because of the right-of-way, to do maintenance on those trees, but not the obligation. Um, my other job is the uh, Highway Garage Committee, <coughs> and uh, as amazing as it sounds, we have only good news. Uh, it's good. It, it's really, it's really been wonderful so far. Um, it started off this summer with, well, it started much before that, but um, uh, 
Ron uh, did all the site preparation, arranged for the blasting, and did a tremendous amount of work up there in a timely fashion, and it was perfect according to the contractor who had to put concrete on <coughs> the um, graded uh, area for the slab, and it had to be pitched to two drains, and it's very critical to get the uh, stone surface, Ron's job, correct so that they didn't put in too little or too much concrete. And they were very happy with how that turned out. So that was really great. Um, the slab, all the concrete work is done. We're, I'm talking about the storage building, the 10 day unheated storage building. Um, and tomorrow, some, perhaps all, of the building will arrive. And so work will begin tomorrow on erecting posts for that building. Um, the bidding was a wonderful surprise. We got the contractor we wanted for $100,000, roughly $100,000 less than we budgeted. So we were just, just thrilled with that. And, and it's the contractor we wanted. <laughs> And that contractor is doing a great job. They're working well with Ron. They're easy to talk to. Um, they even made a few changes and charged us for things. So, so far, um, it's really, really been great. Tom has been a tremendous help. Um, he's been involved quite a lot. Uh, and so, that's the story with the storage building. And uh, Ron and I are guessing that that whole thing will be done in probably in January at some point. So you'll see a big red building up there. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> the next building, the maintenance building, which will have uh, an office, break room, shower, bathrooms, tool room, utility room. Uh, it'll be heated and it will have a maintenance bay and a wash bay. Um, that building is under design we have uh, cost estimates, uh, and the warrant for the special town meeting will have our request for $1,469,000, which uh, if we're lucky, we can come in under that as well. Um, and uh, Tom and Jan are working on the uh, the borrowing for that. Um, so I think he wants to update the number. Pardon? Uh, the, the warrant actually has a lower figure because we have a considerable amount of stabilization. Oh, I didn't mean so to say the warrant number. I meant the budget for the year. Yeah. The project figure is. The warrant number is less than a million dollars. Yes, for borrowing. Correct. Okay. It was 1.9 last time, so. Right. Just almost half of what it was. Good. And it's going to be, I think, at least as good as we'll be. Um, we have engaged a, a company for value engineering, and uh, their fees aren't ter tremendously high. And I think already they've shown us that they are more than earning uh, their fee in savings that we've gotten in their design review of the electrical, plumbing, and HVAC portions of the, of the design. Uh, so, I think that's the report here. Walter, Walter and his committee has done really an outstanding job uh, on, on the building. Um, brought it in at less than we thought it was going to come in for. A lot and, less. Uh, worked uh, work with the uh, the engineers and the designers to make sure everything is right. Ron and his highway crew did a lot of the site work, which saved us a lot of money. So the combination of, of, of Walter and Ron putting this together and working together on this has really done, done a tremendous job for the town. Thank you both. And for those keeping score at home, the first time that the town tried to get a garage, a, a new highway facility, was April 1974. Little, little history. Yeah. Little historical. So, I mean, if, if 
your committee, if your project doesn't go through the first time, just remember, right. there's still hope. 45 years of constant asking, and it might happen for you too. Ron, Ron what do you have for? I, Ron Sui, Highway Department. I do want to say that the other committee members, Peter Jeswald, Liv Wyatt, Ken Womet, and Hank Horseman have done an awesome job on that committee, the build the garage committee, to make this all happen. I mean, there's been a lot of work put into this. I just want to make sure they get thanked for what they do. Um, highway department, as busy as ever. Never seems to change. There's always plenty to do. Last year we did uh, paving projects in Main Poland Road and North Poland Road. Actually, we did it. It got paved the beginning of November, and a week later we had snow on it, which wasn't an ideal situation, but it made the winter a lot better having it paved because the roads out there were in terrible shape. So now we got something decent to work with out there. This spring we took on Hoosick Road project and pretty pretty happy how that road turned out. Um, haven't heard any complaints from the residents. We spent a lot of time with residents down there in the beginning, which seemed to help the progress of the project. Um, we've been spending a fair amount of time with our gravel roads to try to maintain them so that people can travel across them. We spent some serious time on Graves Road and that's showing good signs of the work <coughs> that we've done. Um, but there's a lot more roads. I mean, we do have 24 miles of gravel roads mm -hmm. out of the 64 miles of total town roads that we have. So there's a lot of work to be done. We've been spending some of, as much time as we can on tree trimming and the places that we've done that has made things a lot better. Um, power company has been a major help to us in the areas where they've done tree removals and opened up the area so the sun can get on the road and I'm guessing it's made a big difference as far as you know down winds and stuff for storms. Yep, it We've certainly had plenty of windstorms this year. And future projects is Waitley Road. We're looking to do this end of Waitley Road. We do this end, get that road straightened out. I had applied for a grant for doing Shelburne Falls Road, for three quarters of Shelburne Falls Road, and unfortunately we got turned down for that grant, but we'll try again next year. And I've actually, I've been without my assistant since August and we just hired a new person to start in the next week or two so that will make my life a lot easier in a lot of ways <coughs> and she has some really good credentials. She's a pretty good grant writer which will hopefully help like with Shelburne Falls Road and any other grants that we're looking to do. So, pretty much that's some of what we do. There's a lot more, but. <laughs> right. So the Thank town you, voted money for a lift last 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 year. Do you want to? And I see that for the design of the lift. No, no, I'm sorry for a personal lift for a rental. We, we, a rental. Oh, you mean the and lift for doing the uh, for doing trees? And I see that it's, oh. you've, it's you've rented it again. It's out on the Shelburne Falls yes. Road. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's worked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a difficult situation with the rent. That's why I, originally I wanted to buy one was because it does end up sitting a lot because depending on weather, um, it changes what we have to do. And, but at this point, I mean, if that's the way it's going to be so that we can have one and use one, then it works out. It just in my opinion, I'd rather own one than have see it sitting there knowing that I'm paying yeah. money for something that we're not using. Mm -hmm. 
but that's the way it is. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Yeah. Alan? Uh, Alan Singer, Chair of the Town Finance Committee. And we have uh, not only, uh, well, hopefully, one slot available, the five slots. We have four people. We have Roy Cohn and Tom Donovan, who are longtime members, and probably another person who will be joining for the Citizens Academy effort. I don't want to mention names yet because it, we have to go through the official process, but obviously uh, someone who was recruited through Citizens Academies, you know, someone who understand and cares to understand more about town government. In terms of the finance, we look forward to the upcoming season, and we're really happy to hear that the Long-Term Capital Improvements Committee has been resurrected. Hopefully it will give us some, some context to uh, make these recommendations on certain key money in the season, including the December 9th, uh, special town meeting and the May 11th, uh, 2020 committee. I'm assuming the special, uh, special open, excuse me, the regular town meeting. In terms of uh, the uh, finances, I mean, the town finances at this point, tax rate went up a little bit. We're sitting on over $577,000 of free cash, which has been the highest figure in quite, quite a number of years. So uh, that's information. And uh, you know, well, obviously, always, always lots of opportunities to spend it. <laughs> I'll make sure of that. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Thank you. And, and so also, uh, in terms of borrowing money, interest rates are coming down again. So, uh, you know, we'll see. It could be a good opportunity to lock in some long-term money to finance some of, the, uh, some of the items that will come up between special town meeting and presumably the May 11th, 2020 town meeting. And... Uh, that's it. It's a great way to learn about it. If you know, anyone, if, if you know of anyone who's interested in uh, joining the uh, Town Finance Committee, we have one more slot. Ideally, it would be somebody who has an interest in serving perhaps on a personnel committee or the Long-Term Capital Planning Improvement Committee as a liaison, especially personnel committee, because uh, in terms of the class of items of expenditures in the town, the number one item is salaries and wages. And uh, so it's important to have someone go between the personnel committee and the finance committee because there are a lot of things that are very will come up, including some of the warrant items for the special town meeting about new position and pay raises and this and that. And I think there are 46 employees of this town that have benefited positions. So there's always looking at the long-term financial consequences to this town in terms of... Uh, Salary and health and health uh, retirement uh, implications, OPEB, all that. It doesn't get any easier. You might be following this on the state level because of the budget surpluses. There's more Chapter 70 and 90 monies coming our way, but rest assured, it won't be much, and most will be spoken for anyway. And uh, that's that. St starting January 1, the Monday after New Year's. Mm -hmm. For the well, next four months, we'll be uh, having, having close connection with the select board. It, I, I was just going to say it's very encouraging to know that the chair of our finance committee is looking forward to budget season. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Because we're going to be spending a lot of time together yeah. between the finance committee and the board trying to figure out um, where to get the money and, and have to yeah. spend the money in the best way possible. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, well, our tax rate went up 11 cents per thousand, which is one of the smallest increases of any of the 26 Franklin County towns. So, whatever. Did something, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, between, between the Finance Committee and um, our finance team, which, which Tom leads with, with our treasurer and uh, our assessor, uh, they've done a tremendous job in making sure that the finances uh, of the town are in really good shape, um, and, and you know we're going to keep keep doing that moving forward. Yeah. So thanks. Bruton. Hi everyone. I'm Bruton Strange. I'm on the Conservation Commission. Um, we try to enforce the DEP regulations regarding wetland and river resources, uh, in a nutshell. So uh, a lot of what we do, um, for those of you who don't know, is people who want to build. Um, near these wetland resources, they come through us and we help with the permitting process. We also sign off on every construction permit uh, in the town. So that goes through us one way or another. Um, 
So we're a committee of five. We're fully staffed. This time last year, we were in quite dire straits, and Bob had decided, had, well, I forced him, one of those three, to, to come on the commission to help out to, to have a quorum because we are a permitting body, and it's pretty important. But so now Bob's still with us, and I think maybe even enjoying it. Yeah. Um, uh, we're up to five, which is nice. And um, But uh, he may, well, we're always looking for people who are interested, to be sure. Um, this year, the big thing for us was the proposed solar farm out on Poland Road. That took a lot of our resources, um, a lot of my resources, and a lot of learning, and a lot of help from everybody, particularly from the planning board and Joe. I think those guys really set a tone with that project and uh, kept them in check from my point of view. Um, so I am grateful uh, for the work that you guys did. Uh, thank, thank Beth. She's taken over his chair. <laughs> oh, great. Well, I don't mean to, to, that's, no, to that's take fine. anybody. No, but, I have no. Okay. It, it, it uh, well, the planning him. board was really it's helpful. definitely on him, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> as a side note, I guess they are pursuing that. They're working with Tom on their decommissioning bond at this point. Next year. Next year. Um, yes, we should be able to sign uh, the agreement with them for a pilot project ne at next week's select board meeting. It was wild. And, uh, <laughs> they have uh, acceded to our requests for uh, the decommissioning bond and making that work for the town. So. Uh, looks like uh, we're ready to go forward with that. Don't get your hopes up. Virtually all of the solar in Western Mass is on hold right. while the, no, the no. DOER no. tries to figure out what the solar regulations are going to be, the new smart regulations, and, uh, and it's not moving quickly. So. I'm assuming they know something or they wouldn't be spending the money, but it could be. Uh, no, they want to be in line. Uh, the last time when, when, the, when we went, started the smart program, <coughs> all of the... People who were in line got their projects approved, and nobody else got their projects approved. So people that have some money to invest are putting in all of the work it takes for them to get their projects approved. And, and, uh, and, and next year, this project has been approved by the DUER as having their place in line. But, but there's a lot of projects ahead of them. So, so don't start spending, you know, the... The, the, the pilot money that we're going to get, don't spend it right away. <laughs> or all in one place. <laughs> right, so it was a big to-do, those guys coming to town and, and talking to us. And um, so we got through that bit of it. Um, so they're permitted by us, and I thought we found some really good concessions with them. And it was, it was pretty hard fought at times. Um, but I think we, we found a happy place where um, mm -hmm. citizens who came and, and spoke up, I thought they were... Uh, heard and, and listened to that. So that was important. Um, as far as the future goes, you know, we're taking it as it comes, no big plans. Um, just trying to get everybody up to speed and to, uh, yeah. So lots of training. Um, that's what I'm hoping to do is to spread the training out and send people out to get educated. So um, more people know what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thanks. Yeah, that was quite Right, eh? Yeah, um, the, uh, the, the, the next AM project was, is a really big project. It's a six uh, uh, megawatt project. And, uh, you know, among the work of the Conservation Commission, the Planning Board, our assessor, um, Lee uh, Whitcomb, and we brought in a consultant to help us with the pilot. Uh, and we negotiated what, what I think is a really good deal with next AM. Uh, and we're, we're getting a, a, a good deal of money uh, for the pilot. Um, and it all came together. NextAmp's an excellent organization, by the way. So uh, we, we should be, uh, with all these pieces coming together, we should have a pretty good project out there. Beth, what do you have for us? Uh, I'm Beth Gershman. I'm now the chair of the planning board, and Joe is the... Vice chair. Vice chair. <laughs> Why I'm sitting in the back row. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just hide him in the corner there. Um, and uh, we are a board of five elected folks. And this year it's myself, Mary McClintock, Joe, Jennifer Mullins, who uh, was elected last year, and Bill Mavius, who, was, who came on the year prior to that, and Dave came on as our uh, as an, an associate and was extremely helpful through some of our um, processes this year. And then he rotated off 
And we are, we'd be happy to have another associate if, if you know anybody, not to steal anyone from the finance committee or the personnel committee, but if you know anybody who might be interested, this is a, it's a great way to start. Um, this year we had two firsts as a planning board. Um, the permitted, we permitted the large scale solar array and um, we're also getting ready to go through a special permit process for a cannabis grow operation in town. It was super helpful to have uh, specific bylaws related to these things. Um, and um, the, the public hearing process is really essential. So as, as you mentioned, the permitting of the solar array was really impacted by comments from the abutters and um, the requirements of the Conservation Commission. And that was great that everybody could work together and work things out. Um, and I thought that without this bylaw in place, this 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 might not have been so smooth and it would have been a much more difficult process all the way around. So I'm really happy that we have these specific pieces of zoning bylaws that we can help address these big these big things that are coming our way. Um, um, what else was really a big deal? So uh, this year we received a technical assistance grant to assess housing issues in Conway and we're working with Alyssa LaRose from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Um, looking at issues related to affordability, helping people stay in their homes, looking at ways to offset cost burdens of home ownership and renting in Conway. So to be considered affordable, which I mean small a affordable, small a affordable, housing costs, which include utilities, the taxes, mortgage and insurance, um, should not be more than 30% of gross household income. Um, if they are more than that, then, then you're considered cost burdened. And in Conway, 20% of households are cost burdened. That's kind of high, I think. Um, Mary McClintock is representing us in a new small town housing working group, which was con convened by the FERCOD. And uh, they're looking for regional solutions that might include ways to help area homeowners turn one family homes into two families, or possibly supporting home buying for moderate income people. Um, using Community Preservation Act funds as some other regional towns have done and some other kinds of potential assistance. Uh, a lot of our time was taken up with marijuana bylaws and potential marijuana establishments. We're all there probably when we passed, when the bylaw passed uh, September 2018, last year. We had uh, several conversations with two potential applicants as the select board also negotiated the um, host community agreements, and we're expecting an application for a special permit and site plan review from one applicant this week. And we'll be scheduling the public hearing after they file that application. The special permits application process is streamlined and easy to follow. It's right now on our website. I think it's great. Um, Only 18 pages. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's streamlined. And uh, our future projects are hoping to review and potentially revise parts of our master plan, um, revisiting the possibility of adding a zoning use table to our, to our bylaws. And uh, we've got nothing on the December town meeting warrant. We're very happy. Um, <laughs> and we have representatives to other committees and boards, to the Franklin County Planning Board, to the Conway Community Preservation Commission uh, Committee, the Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership Project, the Small Town Housing Working Group, and the and the still in existence Conway Wastewater Treatment Committee. Do you have anything else? To add? The sewer rats. The sewer rats. Uh, just just, sewer uh, just about, the, the, about the cannabis. I, I just thought, in, just from a whole of government sense, we were one of the only towns that brought a cannabis <coughs> operation into town, or is bringing one. Is have made it. People, um, that did not get hauled, that whose select board did not get hauled before a federal grand jury last week. Statewide, especially federal off the Federal grand jury? Why? Well, all the what? towns near us that have sort of our East Hampton, North Hampton, Greenfield. Oh, for they, what? <clears throat> for taking licenses with, uh, with how much compensation they were asking the uh, applicants to make and, 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 and how close to the three and a half percent maximum they were getting and whether they were judged, because they had, that had to be based on actual expenses. And we, we, um, whether you liked it, whether you could call it blessed or cursed, we were limited in the amount of actual expenses the town would occur. We don't have a water system that would require you know, all these additional water tests right. to make. We don't, you know, we, the, we, a lot of other things that we don't have in terms of infrastructure that other towns do that has a cost, a cost impact. 
So we we had to we had we had to settle for a lower number, but that kept us all out of the who's gal. So good good for us. Good for you. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of related to that, but not, not marijuana, but on solar. Um, you, you know, I mentioned that the DOE are held hearings trying to do the, figure out what they're going to do for the new solar, solar regulations, the new smart program, and and many towns are suffering from very large next amp style, but out of state and ruthless large hedge fund hedge fund companies coming in and purchasing. Right. 30 or 40 acre lots secretly over the last few years and now coming in with high paid attorneys and harassing the heck out of their conservation commissions and their zoning boards. And most of these are towns that have no zoning regulations. Mm -hmm. and, right. and, 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 it, and when I hear these people get up in, in state hearings and talk about what that feels like and how they want the DOER to figure out how to protect them. I am so thankful yes, for so what you thing. guys put in place. Yes, I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to say one thing, which is that we now have an administrative assistant that we share with the Conservation Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals, and who else do we share? This is it. And we, we are all so <laughs> grateful yes. to have an, an assistant because, man, Whew. this amount of work, you just can't yeah. do it. Yeah ourselves. Yeah. Alexis, she's fantastic. Yeah. And, and a couple of Please stay, Alexis. It costs nothing. And, and, yeah. and she, you should give her these. Yeah. <laughs> for all what he has. Thank us. you. I'm uh, Carl Darrow, and I'm a historical commission with my colleague over there, Julia Stone. We have seven members. We meet monthly. Um, we have established a very good working relationship uh, with the neighboring uh, communities, uh, Asheville, and um, lots of field trips out in the bush to identify historic solar holes, and the latest one is a potato hole. If you don't know what that is, it's a hole that's been dug in the ground and there's beautiful stonework uh, surrounding the entrance. It's quite a large, not large, but a, you could actually go in, and there was some debate at, um, when we went to that, who would go in the hole? <laughs> <laughs> the greatest fear the was that there might have been a bear in there. <laughs> um, Bill Burnett and his, his daughter um, went on a historic um, hike from Asheville down uh, and through the towns and it was picked up by uh, public broadcasting, I believe, and he's reported to the um, neighboring historical societies, including Shobar Falls, uh, on their experiences. We do oral histories, and um, we learned that David uh, Lee, who is Dean Lee's son, is writing a book with lots of uh, illustrations which he has digitized and we have those illustrations now uh, that we can use in our own projects. Uh, Yulia, help me please if there's another thing that you might want to mention. Um, we should say we're fully staffed. Fully staffed. We have seven members. We have seven members. And everybody is coming regularly. Yes, that's right. And we're very productive and uh, we're very productive and we're having a good time. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Carl. Let's let's go back to to Laurie. Laurie Lucier, town clerk. Um, not a whole lot to say as I haven't been here but a few months. Um, just been doing a lot of organizing, a lot of learning, attending some classes. We have recently have up and running an online pay system for renewing your dog licenses, ordering your vital records. Um, I could take a credit card at the office, or you can just do it right online. Yes, that was a big. That's a big. Um, really, not not much else. Thank, thank you, Lori. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all we all have our different ways of organizing. Uh, our former town clerk, uh, Ginny, had a certain way of organizing. She knew where everything was. Uh, you walk into Lori's office and it's like, 
Um, it's amazingly organized. It's scary organized. <laughs> so uh, that it looks great. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. What do we got? Nothing really new. Nice and quiet. Yeah, quiet. Things, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Things are things are pretty quiet right now. Winter's coming, so be ready for it. Slow, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> good, good report, Chief. Joe, what do you got? I'm going to speak for the sewer rats this time. Yes, yes, speak for the sewer rats. I missed it last year. I'm not sure if I did, but um, just to take you back a bit, and not to 74, but we started this project, I think, in 2013 or 14. It was an outcome from a, an attempt to change our bylaws, and we wanted to add a center village district. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we thought it would be driven by the desire to, to not pollute our aquifer and economic development, so the main thrust. Um, in early 2018, actually uh, pretty much in January, we got the second report from Ty and Bond. Uh, the cost has gone up to one and a half million dollars to serve 30 to 50 homes in the center village. Um, right after that, we applied for a Mass Works grant, uh, along with Ron applied for one too. I forget which road it was, but in 18. Uh, ours got denied, I did yours. I think we both got denied. <laughs> um, I've come to realize that Mass Works is driven, at least in our case, by economic development. Mm -hmm. And they're actually looking for us to have people sign up to to develop our downtown, and it ain't going to happen. People aren't going to come and knock the doors down in Conway. It's mm -hmm. going to be, I guess I would call it organic growth. You know, maybe somebody's going to open a restaurant or something. So it's been, I think, extremely difficult to go down that road. We did not apply this year, um, but we did get rejected in 18. Um, I did recently attend a sewer and water forum in Waitley. There were 92 people in attendance. And one of the common themes was lack of funding for infrastructure. We broke up into groups based on uh, five or six different topics. Lack of infra infrastructure had two tables, everybody else had one. So a lot of people there that were looking for funding for you know wastewater or water uh, projects. Deerfield was looking for water to redo their treatment plant. As you know, they finally did get funding. And so they're moving ahead. Uh, the center of coal rain, apparently their water table is going up, so they're getting a lot of flooded septic systems. And they can connect into the cotton, I think it's a cotton mill, or, but it, they need a few million dollars to run the pipe there. And apparently the people close to the mill get free sewer. They, they are allowed to put their sewage in the plant because they have an oversized capacity. And may, they made the same offer to the town center, but Apparently now the people outside the town who are getting it for free don't want to pay for the pipe to service the center. <coughs> and that's kind of how I feel right now. I, um, a million and a half dollars for 50 homes is too much to ask of those people. And also I heard at this meeting that creating districts, uh, a lot of districts are in, in suffering financially. Districts, I think, are not economically viable. So it, my sense is that we need to take a town-wide approach to this. It's going to sort of be like the highway garage. We, we all need it, but we're not necessarily all going to use it at, you know, to the same degree, but we all need to chip in and pay for it. So we've taken the approach and we really sort of backed off on having meetings, and we're trying to find grants that will help us lower the cost. We can get all the 2% loans we want, but I don't think it's going to work. I don't think the townspeople will sign up for the kind of money we're talking about. So we're, we're desperately looking for grants to if we can find some way, and hopefully ways that do not involve economic development. Because that, that, that seems to be an exercise in futility, as near as I can tell. The, the good thing about the meeting, there was a lot of enthusiasm for finding money to do infrastructure improvements uh, for sewer and water. So maybe something will come out. Just as an aside, that was, I think it was uh, started by <laughs> Joe Comerford and Natalie Blythe or Blas. Uh, they, they spearheaded this along with the COG. So it was, it was quite an interesting Great meeting, stuff. and there were a lot of people there in attendance. So mm -hmm. I think that's it, unless somebody has a question. So the, the grant program that Deerfield's getting their water supplies funded with is the MVP program. And I don't know how familiar you are with that, but when that, mm -hmm. that 
the fur cock person. I, I think we were told that was not the way to go. Is that right? I think they actually got their money from uh, the. Uh, they're doing MVP now, and they have a consultant for it. And they, well, that's for a different project, I think. Isn't so that part of it? That, I don't part think that's for the store, but I could be wrong. What is MVP? Um, but that that it was suggested that it would be now a good fit because there are okay. elements of climate change and preparedness in oh, the river. Yes. And, um, Tom and I can different. discuss it again, but the last time I talked with Tom, we, we decided not to look at <coughs> an MVP grant for him. That's what you, the sewer system. Next year. What we really need is for the town to, is for the state to expand its major infrastructure program, which is Mass Works, in the same way that they extended the ability for small towns to apply for road grants, because roads are obvious infrastructure that are necessary. Uh, small towns have a carve out of the of the amount of money that goes into that grant program for road work. We need a similar carve out for other kinds of infrastructure. Um, when the Clean Water Act, was, there was a lot of grant money available to build the sewage treatment plants that are now need another influx of money you know, to get to the next generation of plant. There doesn't seem to be any funding for sewer infrastructure or mm -hmm. even water infrastructure that I'm aware of. I think Tom's right. They're, they're neat. For, you, for those of you familiar with the government, they earmark money for certain things, and you sort of have to put the peg in, 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 a, in a square hole, the square peg in the square hole. You have to match up your need with their program. There just doesn't seem to be a program for sewer system at this time. Yeah. Janet, what do you have for us? Uh, I'm with the Open Space Committee. We've had a very busy year. Um, of late, a lot of our attention is focused on what used to be called the Rose property, but this is now the South River Meadow, um, 11 acres owned by the town, and it's hayed in the middle. And the perimeters have been um, uh, cleaned up of invasive plants, and that's this was the third of a three-year CPA-funded program, and it's fantastic. Uh, we have a nice walking trail around there that's used quite a bit by the people in town and dog walkers. And we have our first bench there. I encourage everybody to go take a look. It's a memorial bench, uh, a stone, Asheville stone bench, uh, donated by the Hatch family. For those of you who remember Holly and Fran Hatch, they lived here for a long time and they wanted to on got a very nice engraving. Mm -hmm. So um, we uh, have room for maybe three more benches somewhere along the 11 uh, acre meadow, the perimeter. Uh, we worked with the um, uh, highway with Ron this year and the CONCOM to get approval for management plan for the, the um, mowing and they approved, he approved our clean up our dog sign and, and the bench. <laughs> um, and uh, a little relocation of the um, snow dumpage there. So we are coming along. We had two very successful nature walks. We had Dr. Gruyere, the pollinator professor. Uh, everybody's excited. We are supposed to learn, start to learn to recognize one bumblebee for another. We, Western Mass is home to one of the endangered or less popular bumblebees and we're planning and encouraging oh and they like they like uh, wild blackberries so don't mow don't kill them on your own yards um, okay. and uh, uh, that's a lot of what's kept you oh we had we participated in uh, the, um, the source to see cleanup with the Connecticut River Conservancy. Actually, it started because we have, um, we had some need for some small trees and shrubs to help protect the riverbanks now that finally that the, the, the Japanese knotweed and some of the other stuff is gone. So they put us in, they had a, FERCOG put us in touch with the, the river, river Conservancy now, whatever it's called, something else. And um, 
we got 115 uh, little saplings and had a, a crowd and, and they helped um, round up the sixth grade from Mr. What's his name's the Thank you. The, uh, and and we had a, 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 a nice morning of helping the, the kids help plant the trees on Saturday, and then we had a bunch of adults. On, uh, they came out on Friday and Saturday, so that was exciting. Um, our, one of the next projects or needs really is a sign that's going to say Town, South River Meadow, Town of Conway, because when we have we still don't, a lot of people don't know where it is. Right. So that's in the future. Um, we have this year. For the first time, uh, volunteers, dedicated volunteers for years, have mowed the walking path around the meadow. And the, the powers that be over there, they really don't like the, if, the volunteers doing that. And so now we have paid contract. A play, it's part of the, finally we got it negotiated and the person that's in the bid. And, uh, in the process of that, of course, now they've cost her a lot more, you know, almost close to 2500 or something for a year. And the budgeting for that sort of fell between the cracks, between where it was coming from and the deadline for getting some budget submissions, which we didn't know what the price was or anything. And uh, so that's going to be on the special town meeting warrant. Thank you, Jen. Mark, what do you have for us? Um, I'm Mark Silverman from the Zoning Board of Appeals, and this is the time of year I always feel embarrassed because you guys all talk about all your meetings, and we meet whenever we have a, an application for a, a, a variance or a special um, permit. And so we met once. <laughs> um, we, but, but it was an important meeting. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, we actually we benefited from Alexis also. That, uh, she did the minutes for our one meeting, <laughs> but it was it was very helpful. Um, I found this year for some reason I ended up getting a lot of emails from uh, from people needing information of what they needed to do to um, arrange variances. Um, and it turns out none of them needed variances, there. so I got to pass the buck at each one. <laughs> and uh, so they mostly concerned the conservation commission and the planning board. So I, I don't know if that counts as a meeting, but. Um, that's really the only the only role they've had to to um, to fall. Um, we have three members. John is one, so that's uh, almost out of desperation for him to have to wear two hats. Um, so hopefully, we're also set up for five members as well. Uh, so if we find we can get more volunteers, that's. As everybody said for their committees, it would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark. Giselle, what do you have for um, us? So I'm co-chair of the um, Conway Cultural Council. And um, our main duty is to give out small grants. We get about, well, this year was close to $5,000. People apply through the state system, the Mass Cultural Council. And um, so we just had our meeting last week, the week before, and allocated all that money for this upcoming year and we can do more things so this year we really wanted to do an event so we we are able to take a little bit of that money and do our own event if we want so we did hold um, an event called the art salon that was part of the Conway festival and it was very successful and our, our goal is really to encourage more people to do events in Conway or at least Conway artists and musicians and you know to, to serve Conway more and to benefit Conway residents more so uh, we wanted to increase the visibility of the council so we talked about the process and made ourselves available if people had questions or wanted help with the writing of the grants because I think some people are intimidated by writing these grants they're very simple little grants but if you've never written one you might feel like you, you, you don't know how to do it so we've tried to make ourselves more available that way and um, we had a good group of you know, applications and, and more Conway, I think, with more benefit to Conway. So we're happy with that. And we've recruited three new members. So we have five, uh, eight members all together, which is great. Um, we only need five, but we know one's going to be rolling off in June. So it's nice to have people who, um, you know, can come in and have already had some experience. So that's it. 
It's a really nice event that our. Yeah, oh, thank it you. Really nice. It was really fun. Yeah. We had like 80 people, I yeah. think, and mm -hmm. it was really a nice event. Two Conway artists were featured. Yeah. And it's really great. Thank you, sir. Say, Bob, do you have anything for him? You no. Just, okay. <laughs> Julia, anything to add? No. no? Okay. I'll be a good job. Mom, <laughs> tell us what you do. Spoke for the What's that? Spoke for the yeah, you want you want school committee first guy, school committee, right? All right, school committee. Um, so we, the uh, com <clears throat> the Conway Grammar School um, once again in the Mass Live Boston Globe whatever rankings of elementary schools based on standardized tests, we're still in the top twenty Yay. in the state, the highest ranked one in Western Mass. But they're going to change those rankings, so we're we're going to fall out of them because based. Instead of just going on top line, how good the scores are, they're going to start grading on how much they improve every year. And we're already at the top, and there's no room for improvement. So we're going to go way down the list of good schools. Um, <clears throat> but uh, um, it's going to be another good budget year. Last year, it was under 3% of an increase. We're forecasting something like that again this year. The, most of the things that we wanted to do to the building are being funded by grant. We got a $30,000 no matching grant um, from the state for, for building projects um, so that for, for that building we also um, we hired a new building uh, uh, grounds uh, supervisor that is the whole union 38 shares one with frontier um, and his name is billy uh, hildreth. hildreth and in just two he spent in just Two months on the job he already knows more about our school and the history of it and what needs to be done and what has been done than the fellow that he's replaced after 20 years so it's really good it bodes well for the building um, that was a good hire we also hired a new business manager um, Shelly per data uh, whatever. a lot of you know her she was Natalie Blay. Natalie Blaze is finance manager for her campaign, mm -hmm. um, but she was also the assistant business manager for Chicopee Schools, and we brought up to be our business manager, and she's um, super impressed with her. So in just one year, we made three hires, and I can't believe like how good they're all working out. So that's the superintendent, the business manager, and the building and ground supervisor. Those are the three biggest administrative jobs there are, and like we struck gold with all three. Um, so, um, yeah, the Frontier budget should be better this, the, this year than last year because that was our turn on the barrel last year. Um, it's not going to be our turn on the barrel this year. So, um, okay. Thank you, for sure. Uh, I have a, a few small committees to talk about. But, so one of them is John and I are Conway's representative on FCAT. And here's FCAT recording this. Thank you, Dan. Uh, and FCAT is doing okay. Uh, they That's Frontier. Frontier Community Access Television. So if you subscribe to Comcast Cable, you can watch all of our meetings by going to Channel 12 uh, and look at uh, government programming on your cable dial. Um, and there's also Channel uh, 23, which is sort of general interest programming, so they, they do a lot of school programming, they have good programs for kids at the time the kids are coming home from school, they have a lot of, uh, some programs like Democracy Now! that aren't available on Comcast, and, uh, and they have, uh, you know, a, a mix of programming, they have a lot of old, very wacky movies on, especially on Saturday night. Um, and it, so it's, you know, it's 24-hour cable television. Um, uh, and, and, and they also have Channel 15, which is uh, programmed today by Ron Hawks, and it's a bulletin board that talks about what's going on in Conway. And if you want to announce things that, that are happening, you know, in your committees or things you want to announce, you can have Ron uh, put them up on Channel 15. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so that's FCAT. Um, we also, I, I'm uh, the chair of the broadband committee, and so about a year ago, uh, uh, the state and Comcast finished wiring up many people's houses. I was looking around. I know Alan, they did your house. Um, you know, there were there were about uh, almost 40 percent of the homes in Conway that could not subscribe to Comcast, and so they wired up all of those homes. 
uh, and that worked out really well. Uh, there are still some people that didn't call up Comcast right away to get their house connected to Comcast, and so if you know anybody like that, have them get in touch with me. Um, the, uh, the original sales lady who did all of Conway back when they first wired them up, I'm not sure if she's still the right person to call. But, but uh, so pe people are still getting connected, and uh, for us it works out well that every that 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 FCAT is funded by the number of cable subscribers, and so by by you signing up and and to to get get your uh, to sub to get Comcast cable, you are funding a very small amount, but a tiny piece of cable. And Conway is very tiny compared with the other towns. The number of subscribers we have, we're at about 500 subscribers right now. So, and so, uh, and uh, and the Bremen Committee. So since then, what we've been working on is uh, re renewing our franchise agreement. So we're in the process of working with uh, Comcast to do that. And we'll soon be having a public hearing at the grammar school where people can come in and tell Comcast what they don't like or what they do like about your cable service. Uh, and then, and then I'm also on the uh, the capital, the new capital uh, long-term planning. Uh, and uh, basically, in the past, the capital committee. Uh, met right around budget season and talked about the vehicles that Ron wanted to purchase for the town road crew and and and, and a, a occasional police car or something and that was pretty much all we did and so now we've we've uh, changed the purpose of the committee and we're redoing all of the long-term spreadsheets to do both vehicles um, all of the vehicles to add all of the bridges in town to add all of the uh, the IT, uh, uh, IT in town, uh, all the computers and printers and all of the stuff we buy, and also to add uh, 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 all of the buildings in town that, that, that uh, we need to maintain. So, so that's capital improvement. As, as Bob mentioned, you can watch a select board meeting any time of the day or night. <laughs> People yeah, usually watch them when they're having trouble sleeping. <laughs> so, so, what, what I also really recommend, if you're at all interested in this, is we, uh, that FCAT also has all of our, all of the videos that we make are all up on video on demand. And we use YouTube for our video on demand channel. So if you go to YouTube, uh, now that everybody can get broadband, you can go to YouTube and search for FCAT Media, F-C-A-T-M-E-D-I-A, FCAT Media, one word, that's our FCAT channel, and then you will see, you can then search within FCAT Media, you can search for Conway, or you can, you know, search for or, you know, select board meetings or school committee meetings, but you also can look at things like, uh, FCAT records a lot of things like the historical talk where Mark Fortier gave a one hour talk. If you have not seen Mark's presentation at the Historical uh, 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 Society, uh, uh, you've really missed a great talk. I really encourage you uh, it's a wonderful one hour of television. We record all of the Watermelon Wednesdays down in West Waitley, if you like music. Um, so they're all available, video on demand. Uh, and, you know, the 250th, uh, the, 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 the Festival of the Hills. Anyway, they're all out there, video on demand under FCAT Media. You can look at the YouTube through your Comcast set up your, you don't even need a computer, you can look at it through your Comcast. That's right. You can, you can binge watch select board meetings. Yeah. What you, you can't do, sleep at night, yeah. Tom Hutchison, town administrator. Um, I think I have the best position in town because I get to, uh, I'm paid, unlike the select board, to actually look at the town as a whole and see how the parts are fitting together. And I was amazed uh, when I came here and, and found this meeting, because as far as I know, it's unique. And I keep telling other towns about it, and they say, oh, that's a great idea. Um, because it's, it's so often that we, we operate within our silos and we're, we're sort of lone wolves out in our own, you know, uh, job there with our own duties, and we never get a chance to, to share with other people. So I. I really value the opportunity to be able to see the big picture because it's really rare to be able to do that. It's a lot easier in a small town when you can when you can talk to people and, and you, you bump into people and things like that. But 
it's uncommon in this world, and it's it's really it's it's really gratifying to me. Um, I fill a lot of offices, uh, sets of duties in town. Um, Theoretically, I'm your finance director, which is why I come out with a budget in the spring. And um, I urge you to go look at the past budgets and the, the new one when that comes out. Uh, that gives some some big picture thoughts about the budget, and uh, I put that out, and then the finance committee and select board take out their scissors and paste and <coughs> rearrange it all for uh, for town meeting. Um, so. So as, uh, as the chief administrative officer, that means that I do everything that no one else is doing but still needs to be done. So a lot of, uh, of gap-filling, phone answering, email answering, trying to steer people in the right direction, uh, trying, to, um, trying to solve what disputes I can before sending them to the Conservation Commission or the Planning Board or the Select Board. Uh, trying to get people good information. Um, I was I was very pleased to uh, to uh, see the the new capital improvements planning committee start working on a on a broad capital plan that does include buildings and and IT and you know again the big picture of capital planning we've been missing that and I know that's going to help the Finance Committee do its job and it's going to really going to help Town Meeting do its job because um, it is true, as, as someone has um, been in the habit of pointing out, um, that right now we don't have a long-term plan that we can point to and say, this is what we want to be spending in 10 years. And uh, the, the, uh, the Capital Improvements Planning Committee is going to assist tremendously in that effort. Um, the uh, the highway facility uh, started off meeting, and uh, I pretty quickly found I didn't actually need to pay attention to it because his Walter had it, you know, completely under control, and he's uh, he's maintained an iron grip on on all of the contractors and uh, and pushed things through and uh, had a little luck, <laughs> and we're all. Uh, we're all in a great position as far as as far as that's going on. Uh, again, um, I'm I'm human resources director, which means if there's any sort of personnel problem in the town, I have to deal with that. So that's uh, thank God I haven't had much to deal with in that regard. It's always um, it's always a challenge if there's a problem because you know you're dealing with very real people who live maybe in this very community who. Um, are having challenges, and you don't want to add to those, but you also have to look out for the interests of the town. So that's a that, that's probably one of the most challenging jobs around. And uh, because I have that opportunity to see everything that's going on, um, I'm, I get to kind of think in those terms. So when I was I was really pleased to be able to have this uh, series of uh, educational meetings, this town academy. Uh, the seventh and final week is coming up this Thursday, and Bruton and Beth and Mark uh, will be there, as well as uh, Carl Nelke from the Board of Health as our major permitting bodies, to tell people um, what they do and how to get things done, because they're the, they're the bodies you have to go through if you want to build something or, or change something. And uh, our, our building inspector would, is through the Fr Franklin Regional Council of Government, so we don't have to... Um, we don't have to deal with them directly per se. They're not they're not town employees. But that's it's been really great to see. We've had uh, an average of twelve people who are not presenting <laughs> coming to or, or or they're not Lisa, they're not me, and they're not presenting. <laughs> we've had an average of twelve people at each of the meetings, and I think that's great to to get people in. We've had uh, a number of them are regular attendees, relatively new in town. And we've had interest in town departments and committees. We're pushing volunteerism very strongly at those meetings um, and letting people know uh, that we need assistance. Because what I see is that um, we're living in a time when it's really easy to retreat into our own houses. And uh, 
as John knows, it's 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 actually the Conway Inn that makes the town run. <laughs> so the, the more we can, the, the more we can, uh, you know, think in terms of the community we live in and interact with it and take part in it, the better we'll be. I, I've. I've uh, been saying from the beginning that my goal in, with this town academy <coughs> is to have better arguments at town meeting. You know, we're always going to have arguments, but I want better arguments. I want well-informed, you know, um, well-articulated arguments as to as to why the town should do something or other, so that so that when it does something, it knows exactly why it did it, and um, and that helps define the character of the town. And Conway, Conway has great character. And uh, thank you all for, for doing what you do. That's another thing I do. I thank people. So thank you. I also apologize a lot. I'm really sorry for anything I might have missed, miscommunicated. It's terrible. It must have slipped my mind. It got, fell off my plate. I'm terribly sorry. I'll get to it immediately uh, when I have time. So uh, thank you. Yeah. I do have one general question, and that's about the status of the housing committee and uh, the efforts to, you know, there was a long protracted effort in Pixie and the rotating people on that committee did a lot of work over years and I guess that's folded and so I think, you know, there was a lot of agreement. There's a need for the housing and in a different time, I mean, not that something's going to start working. So I would urge, the, you know, the management up there to recruit and reconstitute um, a housing committee and regarding the committees I believe we all have a responsibility to recruit and then and then we need to look at retention too because sometimes you get new people and they're good for a while and then they you know um, leave so that I think is we've all talked about it before and the, the committees that are fully staffed are very happy that they're staffed but you know it all works to better together uh, when the needs are, are represented. So that's my question to you. What do you know? Do we have a housing committee? Um, Janet, you know, I'm, I'm involved with a couple, couple of organizations on the state level. And no matter where you go, no matter what town you go to, everybody is having a problem with um, developing more affordable housing. It's, it's everybody's problem. And it's, it's not, you know, the, uh, the Baker Polito administration just came out with their, uh, the Housing Choice Act that's supposed to help fund more housing over the next uh, number of years. Um, and it's gonna take a lot of, it's gonna take a lot of state money and a lot of state grants to, to get that kind of uh, momentum, you know, going forward. But it's a, it's a problem that everybody's having. So, you know, we're, it's not just Conway. And as you know, the, the housing, we don't have a housing committee right now uh, because we've, we've tried for eight, ten years to put some housing online well, and it just... there are other options. That, I mean, I bet, I bet right. the planning board's taking right. up, you know, there's money specifically in the community preservation account that's building and has to be spent. Yes. So there, you know, and it can be used for renters, first or last mm -hmm. or secure. Yeah. There's all kinds of creative Cer things, but it should, does somebody to you know, management, develop it, and be on it. Certainly, we have yes. plenty of those funds, and we should be using them. Yeah, some okay. way I don't housing. think I don't I don't necessarily think we need a, a housing committee reconstituted because if, if the okay. planning board is going to do it, great. Working on this housing needs assessment with Burkov, and there you then go. looking at the and then because Mary is on the planning board and representing Conway in this small town housing. Regional group, I think regional okay. solutions are kind of the way to go. Actually, that working better regionally. The, the community preservation's um, membership has one person from the housing authority, and I'm sure there that that's a vacancy on that committee. So perhaps are on the community preservation committee. Right. Mm -hmm. Mary's our rep to that. From, from the planning board. Well, if you're serving as the housing authority, then you get another rep. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Let's uh, talk. Maybe you want to explain what some of the things we're looking at, if that's really a question. Uh, the things that Janet just mentioned are exactly what, yeah. what we've been looking at. Yeah. Um,
Yeah, there's some areas that are, there's some towns that are using their Community Preservation Act funding to help with, with making housing more affordable for people. So we're looking at those kind of solutions Great. right now. It, it's my impression that the, uh, the housing committee uh, had a very clear vision, which they thought was very strategically chosen as a really good place to start in the community. Uh, and when it, it, it became very difficult for them to move forward with that particular vision, I think there was some feeling that, uh, well, if they can't move forward in a vision that was so clear and, and, and there was so much real need for, which was senior housing in town, then how likely would it be that something else would be done? And it, I think it does need to be refreshed with a with a different. You know, I'm I'm, I'm thrilled that this is different to address it. Because you know, well, we we now have the ability have to have housing because you know, we have a few years. We have a bylaw that allows for it. So that would be, at least that road has been paved. But no, no not no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But at least that's an open an open possibility now because there's a bylaw that exists. But that would take somebody coming in and developing. <clears throat> Senior housing. And, and the housing committee made, made a very conscious choice that they were not going to ask for town funds, or at least town funds beyond the Community Preservation Committee, and right. that they were going to deal with a private developer, and that they were going to, they, they made a lot of decisions that were very clear and were designed to get them where they needed to go, but it's true that I think we need to think in broader terms. And I think that's what the, the regional group is doing yeah. and looking at a variety, at a, at, a, at a larger spectrum of possible solutions that Conway could be part of. That said, town meeting did establish a housing committee for Conway and it is, it would be great if we could actually um, implement the will of town meeting. Other people have not stepped up. We have a list of committees that, that need members. I think house, the housing committee probably wins because it doesn't have any. Uh, but we have about 250 volunteer positions in the town, including on-call positions. And we have about 150 people filling those 250 positions. It's another reason that I tried to, to really push volunteerism within the uh, within the uh, town academy and I think it's it's a constant effort uh, I've been working with the um, with David and uh, and Sue Fenton to try to um, come up with an idea of succession planning where we recruit and we get people onto committees that maybe don't have major policy responsibilities and then they move to committees that do and then they move into the, the finance committee or select board as as people who really know how the town works and that that's what we need in order to keep the town really um, working as a town, and I think it's very important to do that. You know, we have here an amazing, an amazing system, and a lot of people seem to be too busy or focused on other things rather than this community. So, any ideas that people have for enhancing how people interact with the community, how they think about it, all that sort of thing. Bring your friends to your committee meetings. Tell them what's going on. Talk up town government. You know, talk up the the, the regional uh, you know housing initiative. Let's you know we can put things on the website. Yeah, you know, it's um, we need to create a little buzz. I think about the great possibilities that are out there that people are working on. Other people just might not know they're happening, and they'd be happy to participate if they did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, finally, the select board. What does the select board do? <laughs> well, you know, essentially, you know, we're, we're, we're tasked with the responsibility of fulfilling the will of the voters uh, from town meetings, whatever they tell us they want to do. Uh, we're tasked with overseeing the public welfare and safety of our residents, uh, spending our tax dollars wisely, uh, making sure that we're fulfilling all of the um, the mandates from the state uh, and all the laws of the state, making sure we're consistent, we're doing things consistent with uh, state law. 
Um, and you know, certainly we, we have, uh, we're very fortunate to have Tom, who's great in his position, his assistant, Lisa, who does a great job, our department heads, um, our staff, uh, our committees, our boards. You know, all of this takes a, a lot of work from a lot of people to make sure it's successful. Um, our, our board itself, I think we have a great board. We have, you know, we have some diversity on the board. Uh, we have, um, you know, we don't always agree, but that's good. We have a lot of, um, uh, a lot of differences of opinions at times, but normally we get to a consensus sooner or later. Um, and you know, that's the way it should be. There should be a lot of back and forth, a lot of um, push and pull, let's say, to make sure that we're, we're considering all of the options and coming up with the one that's best, again, for the residents of the, of the town. So that's essentially what we do. Uh, and, you know, we couldn't do it without the help of, of the boards and the committees and the staff. Uh, and again, you know, I, I sit on the, uh, the Massachusetts Municipal Association Personnel Committee and I come, out of those, I come out of those meetings just thinking we are so fortunate to have the people we have and not to have some of the personnel problems that some of these other towns have. Uh, it's just, we are just, we're golden. Absolutely golden. Um, and, and we're all very fortunate to, to live here in town and, and to benefit from town. You know, I think uh, probably the police chief has the, the easiest job in town because we basically have no crime in Conway. We're just, you know, either that or they're so, so afraid of our chief they just won't come near us. <laughs> but, uh, you know, essentially... Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you know the, the finance committee does a great job. Uh, we're, we're, we're in absolutely excellent financial shape. Um, again, I hear things from other towns, they are just in, in very poor financial shape and they don't see ways to get out of it other than raising taxes substantially. We're doing, we're doing a great job on the financial side. We're in good shape. Our stabilization funds are in the outstanding shape. We're finally doing a, uh, a highway facility after uh, how many years is it now, Phil? Forty-five. Forty-five. Uh, and and Walter and his his crew are doing a great job. As I said, Ron Ron and his crew did uh, a lot of the site work, which saved us a lot of money. So you know, everywhere you look in town, we're we're doing good. And again, it's it's because of people like you. So thank you all. And uh, everybody, thank the support. Everybody, everybody have a very happy Thanksgiving. Yeah.